All right, welcome back. Uh, I'm Troy Frost. The last time we we met, I talked a lot about um, how I became a DJ. This time around, I'm going to talk about some hip hop history, share some sources, um, really focusing in on the origin story of hip hop. Um, I figured I'd start with the five W's of hip hop. So who, what, when, where, and why. Um, and then I have some sources from YouTube to kind of help me guide y'all. Um, and these are obviously sources that you can look into in more depth on your own time. Um, but yeah. So I guess we could start with like the, the elements of hip hop. Um, there are, the way I like to think about it is that there are five pillars. There are nine elements, about nine or 10 elements. And then there are like five pillars that are the, if hip hop was a house, they would be like the foundation or the pillars kind of holding the house up. Right. So those are, um, MCN, break in or break dancing, um, DJing, graffiti art or writing, and um, knowledge of self. Another element that's in this, that is also hip hop element is beatboxing, but beatboxing comes from MCing, according to KRS One. So I put those two together. Um, I'm going to be writing some notes as we do this. And you can write notes as well. Um, but this just helped me keep track. So five elements of hip hop. Or what did I say? I said nine elements, right, of hip hop, nine to ten. And then um, there are five pillars of hip hop. And those five pillars are breaking or break dancing. M C N or rapping. Um let's do slashes instead. I'm gonna play show a um I guess I'll play the audio. Uh an interview with KRS one where he breaks down why it's called breaking MCN DJing with without the G at the end. So in, in the case of the first words. Um yeah, he talks about chemical elements and these being elements in hip hop. And um anyway, I'll share that after this. So DJing, breakdancing, MCing, uh, what else? Writing or graffiti art. It's also called tagging sometimes. Um, bombing. Um, so, oh, and then knowledge of self might also be street knowledge. Um, there is a song by KRS-One called Nine Elements, where he breaks it down. And so I'm, I'm using that as a reference as well. Um, the other ones that he lists, so these are the ones that I would consider to be the five pillars. So I'm just gonna number them first. Now we can kind of add on to this list by adding the remaining elements. Um, so street fashion is one. We know this to be true. Um, a lot of the time, excuse me, street fashion becomes popular uh, and then enters like pop culture. And then we lose track of who created it. 
but hip hop has been very influential fashion wise. Um, yeah, I can say more about that, but street language um, and so Kara's one in the song, he says street entrepreneur realism. You'd have to ask him what that really means um, fully. My read of it is being able to, well, one, having like an entrepreneurial spirit. So when artists pursue their careers in hip hop, that, that could be an example of, of entrepreneurship. I think it's also about, um, I think he's also highlighting artists and uh, members of hip hop that have been a street entrepreneur, whether that's like a drug dealer or something else, and then transformed it, used hip hop to like transform that role. So if you look at a Jay Z, um, there's more to be said about that. But entrepreneurship, um, I also see. That's only, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What's the ninth according to him? I have, oh, street knowledge, street knowledge. Because he puts beatboxing on its own in the song. So that would be five and then street knowledge would be. Anyway, so I put beatboxing with MC in. Um, so the ninth one for me that I'm going to say um, is like producing production um and one could argue that production stems from djing um however i'm gonna put it on its own production slash making so i think these are solid well we can't add any little effects here anyway for me this seems like a solid list of elements that make up hip-hop um hip-hop is not just a genre of music or uh, a culture. Uh, it's, it's this larger thing. It's, um, KRS-One describes it as a civilization. And I see these elements as a part of that civilization, part of the culture that makes up the civilization. In this song, Nine Elements um, by KRS-One, uh, he also says rap is something you do, hip hop is something you live. That feels like something important to highlight because I think the two are conflated. Um, especially when folks talk about the record industry, they often confuse that with hip hop. Um, so, just cite my source real quick. So, Nine Elements by Kara's One was my source for this. Um, I wanted to show, I'm trying to think if I should show that now or after. Let's do it. Let's hear it. So KRS One explains why hip hop is um, a culture. I mean, a civilization. Really well in an interview on Vlad TV. Um, he connects hip hop as we know it today to like prehistoric roots and ways of being um in response to a question about whether hip-hop is a culture or um subculture so let me just get myself together i'm gonna stop sharing these notes real quick now it's me and excuse me let's see There we go. All right. So, hey, where's the internet? I'm trying to share this. But let's see. All right. Sharing the desktop. Let me find my source. Here we go. Oh, man. Wrong. 
Wrong one. All right, here we go. Should not have all these tabs open. Hope all y'all are doing well, taking care of yourself in these times. Um, hopefully you leave this class having learned something new. Whoa, chaotic picture. So let's start at the beginning. <laughs> um, again, this source is YouTube, Vlad TV, um, and he gets into some truths. So let's see here. All right. Yeah, so again, the question that was asked to him is this, in your opinion, is, is hip-hop a culture or a subculture? Um, and he breaks it down. First of all, hip-hop is not just a culture. It's a new civilization. Okay. Hip-hop is one of the oldest cultures on Earth. It is the first thing that human beings do when they come into existence. Breaking, MC. Graffiti on, DJ, breaking is dance. So I'm going to pause it. Well, I'm going to keep, I'm going to pause it. I'm going to go back to the notes so I can kind of write some of the important things that he's saying. And then while I'm doing that, y'all can continue to listen to what he's saying. He's saying some real stuff. Um, so let me back. Graffiti on, DJ, breaking is dance. The earliest form of human communication anyway. So let's rewind. When they just on Earth, it is the first thing that human beings do when they come into existence. Breaking, MC, graffiti on, DJ. Breaking is dance. The earliest form of human communication anyway is dance. How you move. Move according to nature, move according to the fish, the lions, the gazelles, the trees. This is what hominin humans did. This is early human, Neanderthals, uh, Rhodesia man, uh, Australopithecus, uh, early hominin human. The reason most sociologists don't regard hip hop as a culture is because they don't respect you. That's the issue, or me. They don't respect us as people. Any culture, you could say the fans that went to see the Miami Heat play basketball, that's a culture. <laughs> um, politics in uh, Washington, D.C., I guess, where I'm from, that's a culture. Now, those would be called subcultures, meaning you have blacks, whites, Asians, indigenous cultures, all coming together to say, uh, uh, be online. Everybody's online. So there's an online culture. There's an online subculture. Anytime groups of humans come together for one thing, they form culture. Now, that's the textbook. I don't know the sociologists that can't see that. It's, they're ignorant. Not us. They are. That's a subculture. Hip hop is a civilization. Now let me go back. Break it. First things that human beings do is dance. Next thing human beings do is utter. This is MC. Not language. This is before language. This is before organized language. Before all that. Uh, 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 uh. That is called MC. Sociologists only know rap, which is the commercial version of MC. Their knowledge is small, not ours. We are MCs. E M C E E I N C N. Spelled just like that. E M C E I N. MC. -N. And the reason we spell it like that and DJ. So here's what I was talking about before about why it's spelled this way. Um, so I, yeah, I just wanted to reiterate what he was saying about why he considers hip hop to be a civilization. Um, he emphasizes how like the basic elements of hip hop, the pillars, as I was calling them, um, uh, are things that humans have been doing since the beginning of time. 
And so it's not to say that hip hop invented those things. It's more to say, like, I think that's why he says it's a new civilization because we're doing those basic things that everyone can relate to. Um, but now we've added, or in this case, I'm thinking about hip hop's ancestors, hip hop's elders, the people who were part of creating it. Um, they made it their own. So anyway, um, gonna play this. He's gonna explain why um, the names are written as they are or, or called. It's not like just a slang thing. And then we can get into, get back on track with the five W's of like who. This is kind of naming what, we're at, we're at what right now? So what is hip hop? Those elements that we listed as well as a civilization. So. And writing like that is because we call these uh, expressions of ours elements. These are the elements, breaking, I'm seeing graffiti on DJ, and these are elements. So whenever you write elements, at least the chemical society of the world writes their elements as penicillin, mucin. Um, uh, it goes on and on with the way you spell the way you spell chemical elements. Now, most people look at breaking them, seeing and graffiti art and DJs. It's oh, just some black kids dancing. That's their prejudice. If we just look at the facts, we call our expression elements. We spell them as elements, not slang language. M C E E M C E E I N G. So, because we say M C and we drop the G. Uh uh. We purposely leave the G off because the G doesn't exist. We're talking about elements. The elements are what we're talking about. Now let's come back. Breaking. First things human do, dance. Second things human do, utter. Beatboxing. Music with your body. That's ancient, ancient, ancient. Before, go to the great Buddha in Asia. The, the sign language, the hand movements of the Buddha, each have significant damage. That part's cool too, let me skip it. On a, uh, go, 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 and used our hands. That's MCing and beatboxing. Beatboxing is a form of MCing. Graffiti on. Today it's called graffiti on. But anywhere you go in the world, Graffiti art is the world's oldest art. Again, hominin humans. In Toulouse, France, they found stenciled human hands, which they call graffiti, by the way. 32,000 years old. This is early. This is before modern man. This is before homo sapiens. This is hip hop is before all of that. This is hominin humans doing graffiti. What is graffiti? my self-expression in art on a wall the earliest form of graffiti berry juice in the mouth blow it onto the cave wall so you see my head and check it out they blew it they didn't draw they didn't pick up a, a pen and write this stuff no before he continues and i'm pretty sure it's in this video that he says this but i know it's not at this part so i want to say it now when he's talking about the hand on the wall right and then the person putting berry juice in their mouth and then blowing it out to create an outline of the hand or an imprint that blowing is is the equivalent to spray paint right so when you blow spray when you use spray paint when making graffiti it's blowing out so wanted to point that out for you Oh, they put juice in their mouth and spit it onto the wall over their hands so they make an impression with their hands. This is known science. This is science all over the world. The earliest writing, the earliest human writing ever is graffiti. It's called graffiti by anthropologists, archaeologists, sociologists. Go from there to what is called rock art. Rock art is the oldest form of art. We call it black books and we write no stuff, but ancient, ancient humans wrote on rocks, trees. No human on earth writes.
writes like this naturally. This is social indoctrination to write like this. If you give a baby a pen or any writing material, a child, any writing material, they'll go right to the wall. Yes. No human, if you give them a, t a pencil, a young kid, you give them a pencil, they're going to go like this. Show me a table. Mm -mm. They're going to take the pen and out of their own natural self, they're going to go right to a wall and start writing the wall. And the first thing they're going to write is their name. Well, let's pause it there. Um, so we're going to come back to this when we talk a little bit more about DJing um, on its own. But I wanted to show that video because it, um, it kind of like it grounds hip hop in like this larger plane. Um, it kind of explains how it's bigger than us and beyond us, but also how it's been here for so long. Um, and also that it's, it's bigger than just a kind of music or uh, like these elements that we've listed. It's, you know, as he said, a new civilization. So he, 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 I feel like he takes it to like the global aspect in the same video. He talks about how hip hop is a, um, May 16, 2001, hip hop was declared an international culture with the United Nations. And so he talks about that in there. So for me, that really shows how hip hop, hip hop is global and how, um, you know, it's, it's more than a culture. Uh, it's, it's how people exist and live their lives. So back to his point in his song, Nine Elements, rap is something you do, hip hop is something you live. So he kind of, he sets the tone for that in that source. So I wanted to share that. So that, I feel like, like I said, that's like the what, right, of hip hop. Hip hop is a civilization. It's a culture. It's those elements that we listed here. Cool. So um, that's who, I mean, that's what, excuse me, who. So he kind of get got into who when he was like, oh, it's just some black kids dancing. So we could use that as a, a jumping off point. So hip hop was created um, where in New York City um, by uh, black and brown people um so african americans black people from the caribbean puerto rican folks um people who were immigrants um some people say that the the main story around hip-hop is that it was like started in the bronx in the early 70s or early mid 70s 73 to give like an exact year um but some people say that excuse me that it was it started in other boroughs too in New York City that it wasn't just um that it wasn't just the Bronx. So there's a documentary on YouTube called Founding Fathers. And just a second. Look. Yeah, Founding Fathers, the untold story of hip hop. So let me put that in my notes. If I can. Where are you? I've never used this thing before. I should have practiced more before I did. Anyway. So anyway, I'm just gonna put that there. But um back to who. So if we focus in on the Bronx, um, some important people to know are DJ Cool Herc. Um DJ Cool Herc, Grandmaster Flash, uh, and okay, here we are. So let's start with um, Grandmaster Flash. I mean, not Grandmaster Flash. Let's start with Cool Herc. So Cool Herc, he's from the Bronx, 1520 Sedgwick Ave. That's an important address in hip hop. Um, let's see. It's where the first hip hop party one of the first, a very important party happened in hip hop history. Um, and it was put on by DJ Cool Herc and his sister. 
Cindy C. So let me show you that. So I have this in pictures. So right here is um, the flyer for the party. A DJ Cool Herc party is what it was called, Back to School Jam. The story behind this party is that his younger sister, Cindy C., um, Cindy Campbell, obviously. DJ Cool Herc's real name is Clive Campbell. Um, the story is that his sister needed school clothes, so she's trying to raise, she's trying to get more money so that she could buy some school clothes or whatever. Um, and so they threw this party and they invited their friends and stuff. And um, yeah, that I guess this is like, DJ Kuhark was known for his parties. He's known for his parties. He was known for having like the best sound system. Um, as well as like his contributions to the art of DJing. Um, and so August 11th, 1973, that is considered hip hop's birthday. As I said, there are other DJs that existed right in other boroughs in New York city. Um, and so people tend to argue that the Bronx was not all the starting place. Um, but that doesn't take away from the fact that the Bronx had these really key moments to the point where people consider it the starting place. Right. Um, so anyway, that's why we, we tell the story. Um, it's an important one. So that's, that gives you some of like, so, okay, again, to who? So DJ Cool Herc, Cindy C, these are key figures in this first hip hop party, hip hop history in general, some things to know about them. They were both. Um, so here they are actually. So this is Cool Herc and Cindy C. Their parent, they they migrated here from Jamaica. So they were immigrants, as I was saying before. Um, they're black people, obviously, and they lived in this is where they lived, 1520 Cedric Ave. So these are working class poor poor people that were um, working class, poor, black, brown, immigrant folks in new york city and in this case the bronx that were a part of like creating hip-hop and were in involved they were involved in like its formation its formational foundational years so this is 1520 cedric ave they had their party in the recreation room of their apartment building and um yeah they paid Think, I think Cindy C said in a video that it was $25 to rent the space. Um, you know, 25 cents for ladies, 50 cents for fellas. You know, it's on a little index card. Like, just would like for you to take all of that in, in terms of, like, how um, organic it was. It wasn't this big thing. It was, you know, it was just, like, them getting together. Um, so yeah, that's like the early, um, it, that was like an important moment in hip hop. So that covers like who, some of who, cause there's so many other people not going to be able to get to everyone, but that covers who, some of who, and then it also covers where, so New York city, the Bronx. Um, and now that with KRS one's, uh, piece in mind, we could say the whole world, but at its very start, it started in New York city. Um, and then what, and when, we have when, 1973. So the, another source that I'm gonna use is another interview by Vlad TV. Uh, I didn't think I'd be using so many of his sources ever, but he's got some good ones. He has an interview with Grandmaster Kaz where he kind of like sets, in this interview, he sets the tone for like what life was like. Um, not even what life was like, but what, uh, what uh the bronx was like in the 70s when hip-hop was first starting and like what was the norm so let me get my notes on that first now i i wanted to highlight this because i feel like in the way that krs1 kind of gave us a global larger uh setup grandmaster Kaz in this interview kind of sets up a um So global, I guess, like, city, even country, like, just, 
anyway, it, he just kind of like breaks down and like gives image and some important facts about like what the the foundational time for hip hop was like. So I'm gonna pause there. Um, we've kind of gotten into like who and we got into who, what, when. He's gonna Grandmaster Kaz. This interview kind of fleshes it out, so we can go to that next. And let's get into it. Yeah, I mean, from a kid growing up, up until the age of 13, there was no hip hop. But um, I always had music in my house. Yeah. You know what I mean? We grew up listening to the music that our parents played around the house. James Brown. Brown. James Brown, the Motown sound, Michael Jackson, all that, Jackson 5. But um, back in those days, there were no different radio stations for different kinds of music. So, so I, I just want to pause it there for a second. So in this share screen stuff is kind of hard. So in his, in this interview, like he starts off dropping gems. So he's like, up until the age of 13, there was no hip hop. He's born in 61, um, 61 plus 13 is 1974. We know that the party at Cool Herc's party happened in 73. So he's basically just supporting that. Okay. Hip hop really started in the early to mid seventies. Cool. So let me see. Is there a way to like scroll down on these notes? I probably just have to make them bigger. Uh oh, we can just make new ones. All right, cool. So, <laughs> Grandmaster Kaz on hip hop, hip hop's origin story. That's what we'll call it. The source again is Wad TV and it's called Grandmaster. He he talks about Grandmaster. Ka he, excuse me, Grandmaster Kaz talks about Coke Rock being the first MC. So we'll get more into that. But anyway, according to him, hip hop began in '74, right? Then he says, "Oh, that's what I wanted to highlight." So he's um he I know that he says two main sources of for music at this time. So I'm going to put two main music sources. So far he said that he's named the first one which is Parents Vinyl or I'll just say records. So Parents is records. They have their record players and that was their source of music. He shared about them listening to James Brown. Um let me stop sharing this for a second. He's, yeah, James Brown, Michael Jackson, Motown artists, Jackson 5. He's about to make a really important point about the radio. So let me just rewind this real quick. Just a little bit. He, so the second source that he, he says is the radio, but he makes an, an important point about what the radio was like during this time. So listen for that. Five, but um, back in those days, there were no different radio stations for different kinds of music. So all the music was played on one radio station. So 77, WABC, every morning, that's what I got up listening to. So not only did I hear the Motown and the R&B and the soul and funk, I also heard the Barry Manilow's, the, C, you know, the Seals and Crofts, the Three Dog Night, Chicago, America, all that, you know what I mean? So I'm just as influenced by that music as I am by the soul and R&B, so by the time hip-hop came along, it was just about fusing those influences together. Right. I mean, and originally, there were no hip-hop beats. It no. was just basically, you know, funk, funk. So, parent, so he's, yeah, so he talks about the radio. He says that there were, there wasn't different stations for different types of music. So he was getting all the music all kinds of music versus, excuse me. He was getting all kinds of music on one station. So he's hearing hip hop and funk, or not hip hop because it, it didn't exist yet, but he's hearing like soul funk, neo soul, right? Um, as well as pop music and country, I guess, like all these other genres. He, he'll go, he shares more about like who those people are, but um, I feel like that's an important thing to note let me actually put it in my notes. This is much harder than it needs to be. I should have, like, tried to... Why can't I add to it? It's okay. I'm just gonna... 
create a new text box under. So then two was, um, so his parents' his records, right, and then radio station. And he actually named 77 WABZ, ABC, as the station that he was listening to. So let's, let's, let's capture that. Why not? Um, so those are his two sources of music. Um, and that feels important because hip hop is not just, so we talked about the hip hop elements, right? Um, now we know hip hop is like a billion dollar industry. People make money, make lots of money off of it. Um, people are making music. Um, they're, they're also practicing these other elements, graffiti, DJing, breakdancing, et cetera. Um, however, I feel like it's really important for us to understand like how the time in which it was shaped. So to hear him say that all kinds of music played on one station is, is it makes sense why so many genres are a part of um, hip hop music. So Back to it. Funk records. Hip hop, you know, hip hop beats came from the get down part of of a, of a record. Yeah, all right? we call them the break now. The breaks. But back then it was the get down part, and that was yeah. the real funky part of the song. Usually the drum, the drum break. And all right. Um. So yeah. Now he's getting into the next. So okay. So so far he's he's kind of set the tone for like what how they listen to music and now he's going to get into like some of the elements so this next part that he's talking about is really important he mentioned the get down part of the song um so i mean and originally there see. were no hip-hop beats it no. was just basically you know funk funk records Hip -hop, you know, hip hop beats came from the get down part of of a, of a record. Yeah, all right? we call them the break now. The breaks. But back then it was the get down part, and that was yeah. the real funky part of the song. Usually the drum, the drum break, and that's what we came up on. So I mean, when we started trying to make our own music, we made it from music we were familiar with, but we just took the part of it that really was the meat of the music, and that was the big, the breaks or the get down part. You know, originally, from what I understand. Um, when the the DJ was playing the breaks, certain kids started dancing, and it was known as break boys, and then shortened to b boys. Is yeah, that, is that accurate? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, what happened was is that th those get down parts sometimes they didn't come at the beginning of the song, so you would let the song play, and everybody would just mill around and stuff. And then when the get down part get ready to come, that's when the dancers come to the forefront, to the middle. And that's when they get down and do their thing. So they were dancing to those particular sections of those songs, what, what we refer to now as breaks. Yeah. So they became the break boys or the okay. b-boys. Exactly. They dance off the breaks. So he just covered two elements. He covered um, break dancing and how it started. And then he's, he's also covering production because he shared about how um, when hip-hop artists started to make their own music they would use the break part of the song he's also starting to talk a little bit about djing because um you know cool herc and grandmaster flash both well let's start with cool herc um he had a technique called the merry-go-round technique where he'd play the break over and over again right and then you have grandmaster flash who came in and actually refined that with his quick mix theory so we'll get into that more when we talk about djing but he's he's kind of like explaining how the elements showed up together so now i want to skip ahead to the part where he talks about the mc um so he already talked about dancers he he shares about how uh, when the get down part of the song came on, that's when folks would go out and start dancing. So then eventually that evolved into the break dancer. Um, and now he kind of gets, so this next part, he talks more about like Cool Herc. Grandmaster Kaz is also from the Bronx. Yeah, he says that he grew up on Fairland Street, I believe. Fairland Place. 
But anyway, he's going to share about his relationship with Cool Herc, and we'll get a little more information about um, Cool Herc's influence and uh, what he was known for at this time. Met him personally? Boys, or the okay. B-boy. Ah, uh, when I met him personally, or, 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 or when, you, when you was actually, I aware of him? Aware I was of aware him. of him back in '73. Back in, I lived up the street from Cool Herc. Okay, uh, the next block up the hill from Cedric Avenue is Failing Place, and that's the that's the street that I lived on. So I was too young to go to parties um, when Cool Herc first started throwing parties, but I lived up the block. So all the older kids from the block always was going down to Cedric Avenue to Cool Herc parties. Um, cool Herc used to play basketball in Roberto Clemente State Park down down the street on Cedric. So we all saw him and knew, you know, who we were. I mean, the shorties, but I didn't get exposed to an actual party till he started playing music outdoors, like outside. Uh, so we know about the parties because we, we know about his th the first party he threw with his sister, right? So he continued those parties. And Grandmaster Kaz, you know, he's talking about being too young to go to those parties. But then he mentions that he experienced him as a DJ when he started playing outside. So another big part of hip hop culture and history, especially in the foundational time is park jam. So people would get their equipment, go out in the park, use the electricity from the street light and like have a whole party for the neighborhood, right? DJs, excuse me, not even just people, but DJs would go out and with their equipment, right? And, and, and hold these events. So that feels important to highlight that the that hip hop was being birthed in house parties but then also park jams and gathering community is an important tenant in hip hop's creation so the next part i want to play from this interview is when he starts to talk about the first mc cuz this um this is like the origin story of the mc the rapper as we know it today was not has not always been at the forefront. So right now in hip hop, you know, the most popular members of hip hop, particularly like the hip hop industry, but hip hop culture as a whole is the MC. They're, they are who gets the most attention and um, who, who we think of when we think of hip hop, right? Um, and so the MC, though, when they started out, it, th that was just the person that kind of spoke on the mic while the DJ played. So I'm going to let him explain it better than I will. Um, rappers before, there was just DJs that would get on the mic. Exactly. I, I, if, if I had to say there was a rapper, the first rapper would probably be Coke LaRock, who used to get on the mic for, for her when Herc was playing it, Coke didn't rap traditionally as we know it, Herc. I mean, Coke spoke over the music, you know Give what I mean? Give an example of uh, some of Coke's Coke lives. had like a cool, like he would do the shout outs and stuff, you know what I mean, to the people in the crowd, the people that were associated with Herc, the B-boys, or the people that, you know, was down. So it's like, you know what I mean? Yes, indeed, y'all, you rock with the rockers, you jam with the jammers, and boogie with the boogieers, you know what I mean? Stuff like that, no no real like rhyme, like we, like, like we know, but like the tradition of the uh, Hustlers Convention, Okay, that kind of um, dialogue went on. It was more like that old school pimp talk, you know what I mean? But sure. um, if you had to say somebody was first MC, I would say Coke LaRock because he would be on the mic when Cool Herc was playing. Okay, so. So there you have it. Coke LaRock, technically the first, um, first MC. Let's capture that. So, so emceeing, right, we know that emceeing was rhyming on the mic. It was also giving shout outs. Um, and when he was, and when he shared, it wasn't even like a full rhyme. It was like, Grandmaster Kaz shares this, but then also in um, a book, it's a children's book called When the Beat Was Born by uh let's see what's his name because i have it in this oh come on 
thought I did. Okay, whatever. The book is called When the Beat Was... Here it is. When the Beat Was Born by Laban Carrick Hill. Anyway, in this book as well, they talk about they were giving shout outs. They do like short little rhymes, but not like a full song or 16 bars, right? As we know it. Anyway, uh, a verse to be, we, we know that's a verse. But anyway, they just do like short rhymes. Um, announcements like, oh, so-and-so's car is about to get towed. Or uh, again, shout outs, like shouting out their friends and whoever was down with them and shouting out the B-boys. Um, etc. He also talked about there being influence from like pimp culture, which is interesting. Uh, so anyway, in that children's book though, when the beat goes on, they talk about how that the the emceeing comes from toasting, which I guess the way they explain it is that it was a tradition in Jamaica, Jamaican culture to like give a toast, right, or a shout out. Um, so just want to like make that connection clear um so yeah when we think of mcs right so we we think of like rappers i'm gonna put rappers here but we also think of hosts so whenever somebody's hosting a party or you're having an event and the person that is on the mic that's the mc they're gonna mc for the night so that is where that's also a note another thing to note about emceeing is that as krs once said it's spelled this way right but MC also stands for, I really don't like this, these note thing, how, how they do this on Zoom. Anyway, Master of Ceremonies. I've also heard that it stands for Move the Crowd. These are your responsibilities as the MC. Whether you're hosting or you're rapping, rhyming, whatever, like your responsibility is to keep the crowd engaged, right? while the DJ plays or while you nowadays it's like the rappers at the forefront. So while you perform your set, you're keeping the crowd entertained. Um, if you're hosting an event, it's the same thing of like you, you're the master of ceremony. So when the space shifts in, in certain ways, it's your responsibility to announce that to keep everybody on par. So that's the MC. Um, I just wanted to get, that's really it from that source. Shout out to Grandmaster Kaz. Um, but he, for me, it just seemed like he was, like, setting the tone. Like, you're learning about, okay, it's happening at parties, right? It's happening outside. Like, people know Cool Herc from playing basketball. He got his name, I believe, because from Hercules. Cool Herc got his name from Hercules because, um, I think because he was so tall and big. But anyway. Uh, that's what it says in that book, When the Beat Goes On, which I tend to read to my younger students a lot. Anyway, that's the information that I wanted to relay. I'm going to pause here. We're going to come back and talk about DJing, the history of it, and then I'll also do a demonstration. I'll show some, my mix, and then I'll do a demonstration of me correcting some parts of it. So 